Hey guys, it's Jake here. I'm not sure if this unboxing is for Canadian Cutting Edge or for my other channel, Goods, Gadgets, and Gear. I don't know, because some of the packages just don't say what's in them, and I don't pre-open them to see what's in them. I know at least one of the packages is for Canadian Cutting Edge. Before we get started on that, I want to let you know I've got a really slow week this week in terms of not very many videos, and that's because I did that sale, took up a lot of my time packing up knives for that, still working on that, and I'm preparing for a meeting with my MP. That's my Member of Parliament. For my American friends, uh, having a meeting with my Member of Parliament would be sort of like having a meeting with your congressman, congresswoman. And that's because uh, this CBSA thing, Canada Border Services Agency, how they're taking away more and more folding knives from Canadians as they're trying to import them. It's getting really crazy. Knives that are totally legal according to the criminal code in Canada, that's our law, our legal system, they're stopping at the border. And I've heard from a friend of mine, you know, he crossed the border last week, came back with a knife, it was a fixed blade, and then had a conversation with the guy at the border crossing because he demanded to see the knife because they're told to take every folder that has a flipper tab and every folder that has a thumb stud. Just take them. And that's a whole lot of knives that are totally legal to own in Canada. We are even allowed to have assisted knives. Like if you've got a spring built in and you start to open it and the spring takes over and flicks it out, those are definitely legal in Canada. There have been legal cases as recently as just a few years ago where somebody fought for the right to have one of those knives and they won. Yeah, so I don't know what CBSA is doing. I, I believe it's very likely that the Liberal government is telling CBSA to do these things. Uh, I don't have proof for that. It's an allegation, and that's the allegation I make. I think that that's what's happening. Um, I hope that's not what's happening, but you know, it's the only thing that makes sense. Uh, because I don't think CBSA agents on their own are going to come up with this. It may be some top people at CBSA who are doing this as well. I don't know. So I'm meeting with my member of parliament who happens to be a conservative. He's given me a half hour appointment and I'm going to see him on, uh, was it Wednesday or Thursday? I've got a meeting with him. So I got to prepare for that to help communicate to him exactly what's going on and what I feel about that. And we've got something in our legal system where we can do a citizen's petition to the House of Parliament. The House of Parliament is like our... Uh, you know, House of Congress or whatever. That's where all the elected people go to make the laws, House of the, the House of Commons in, in Parliament Hill. And so you can make a petition to the House of Commons. Those generally don't get very far unless there is a member of parliament who sponsors that petition. And so I'm going to try to get my member of parliament to sponsor a petition. So a lot of my brain energy, and you know how little of that I've got left, is going towards that. But let's get to the unboxing. First thing I got is this. This is from, it looks like it's from Poland. Oh yes, I know what this is. <laughs> this is for Canadian Cutting Edge. If it is what I think it is. There is a knife maker by the name of Ostap Hell, and he works with Real Steel. And I've got a number of his knives. And I was talking to him on Facebook a little while back, and uh, he asked for my mailing address. Yes, 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 that is what it is. So we've got a little package here. There's his logo, his. Uh, Oh, it's up this way. Ostap Hell Knives. Yeah, just slides out. Check that out. He makes these, uh, he's got a variety of these in different shapes and stuff. And uh, he sent one to me at no cost as a gift. Wow. That is awesome. Oh, step. This is beyond awesome. This is exactly the style of yours, of all of these that I prefer. Wow. 
And this sort of coppery, goldish kind of anodization is just awesome. I really, really like this. This is just great. Wow. Thank you so very... That's the lid. Thank you so very much. So it fits right in here. It's going to sit in here when I'm not wearing it on some kind of chain around my neck. It's not going to go on a keychain because it's a little bit weighty. I think it's uh, I think it's titanium though, but it's a little bit weighty, and I don't want it to get scratched up. Um, I'll leave a link for his Facebook. You can order these directly from Ostap, and he's got other products as well that you can order directly from him. Um, wow, that's why. Yes, he's from Poland, and that's why I should have realized that at first when this was coming from Poland. Next package is this. This is pretty light, so I don't remember what this is. I don't know if this is for just my personal stuff for you know the family, or if it's for one of my YouTube channels or not. Let's see. Aha! It's a flashlight. Yes, yes, I had talked to this company. That's wonder I didn't recognize it. This is the ELF C1 micro USB multi flashlight by uh, Army Tech. It says born to exceed. <laughs> so we'll be doing a review of this on Canadian Cutting Edge soon. Uh, I do knives and flashlights on Canadian Cutting Edge, and uh, everything else is on. The other channel gets gadgets in here. So this has got a headband system. The headband is right here. And I think it probably takes an 18650 battery. I wonder if there's one in it. There is. No, it's not 18650. These are the, uh, what's the number of these? Uh, 18350. So 18350 battery. Yeah, 18650 is just too big for this. Ah, yes, it works. Battery has some charge in it. So we'll be doing a review of this guy fairly soon. Oh, it's got, oh yes, that's a nice, that's the, um, if you want to use it with a, on a pocket, it's got a um, pocket clip. We'll be doing a review of this thing fairly soon. I've got a charger that I got recently as well that I'm going to be reviewing soon. Finally, I've got this stuff. This is a package from GearBest. And uh, we'll see if this is for Canadian Cutting Edge or not. It's pretty heavy, so maybe it is. Yes, this is definitely for Canadian Cutting Edge. We've got one, two, three items. And they all look like they are HX Outdoors. Yes, they are. They're all HX Outdoors products. It's got a door that flips open here. They do nice boxes. This is... You got the Velcro right there. Let's pull the blade out. Pull the plastic off. I've got a number of HX Outdoors knives that I really, really like. This has got a sort of rubbery kind of handle. That's good. It's very firm, but it's got a little bit of give. Full tang. It's steel right to the end here. It's got a little bit of a, a point there for smashing glass or smashing things. Saber grind. Sneak up trial. D2 steel. And uh, we'll be doing tests to make sure that it really is D2. The tests that I have done on HX Outdoors knives have shown that it very likely is what they claim it to be. It's one of the reasons why I really like HX Outdoors. And they've got a bit of a diamond rod on the side here for sharpening. And I think that's a ferrocerium rod for making sparks. They've got a fire striking section right there. This looks like a very nice knife. Nice retention system. So there we go. Nice fixed blade that we're going to be doing. Check out this. It's a nice little container. What do we have here? Oh, yes. This tiny knife. 
check out this big box for this wee little knife. I was so hoping I would get this knife. Thank you very much to the people at Gear Best for sending this to me. Wow, there we go. It's a totally functional fixed uh, folding knife. Wow, nice uh, dual grind here, or dual, it's like a modified tanto. In the pictures, it looks pretty big. This is very, very small. S35VN steel. And it it does have a price that's definitely high enough for that to be S35VN steel because it is just a small little piece. Titanium handle scales, pocket clip. I love my Wii knives. I was I looked at the sizes and stuff, but I just wasn't expecting something this tiny. There's even a lock bar insert in there. <laughs> that is a very small knife and a flipper tab. Oh, I'm glad CBSA didn't get their hands on this. They'd have to take it away from me because it's got a flipper tap. <laughs> I'm glad CBSA didn't touch this stuff. Good for me. And that's actually a decent quality chain they've got here. It's not just a simple ball chain. Very nice. I'll give you close-ups to this chain when I do the review. Wow, I am excited about this. That is nice. This case is very big. It looks like it's got a nice O-ring around it. Well, not it's not an O-ring, but it's got a, a grommet. So I think it's probably waterproof, or at least water resistant. And finally, we've got this HX Outdoors. So if you want any of these knives, I'm gonna list them all below in the description. And uh, the Elf C1 and Ostap Hell's channel. Everything will be listed down there so that you can uh, access it. And so here's proof that uh, CBSA simply does not have the time to inspect every single package that's coming through. You can get knives in from outside of Canada. That's a flipper tab. This is the Big Brother version of this knife. Exactly the same. Uh, blade shape and everything flipper tab <laughs> let's put these next to each other i'll do it in the review as well but uh, let's put them next to each other right here just to take a look at them check out the difference in size <laughs> that's hard to believe how tiny it is i was expecting it to be about twice the size that's just awesome They've got a sneak up twelve put in there, just like this one has. <laughs> that is just great. That's just awesome, guys. There's a couple of small changes, very, very few. See the cutouts on the side here? Well, see the cutouts on the side here? Same pattern on the sides here. Awesome. I am so excited. Uh, this video started off kind of depressed about CBSA. <laughs> but here's proof. But here's proof that flipper tabs, almost dropped this little guy, can come through the mail. So uh, if you're ordering stuff, it's not inevitable that CBSA is going to take away your knives. Uh, it might be inevitable if you're physically crossing the border, but uh, they simply can't check every single package. I'm sure they scan this with, you know, the x-ray scanner that they say they scan, but they simply can't stop every single thing, especially if we keep on buying knives. So I encourage you, my friends, keep on buying knives. Keep on getting knives brought into Canada so that they don't win. If we let them win, they're going to hurt us bad. And the way we let them win is, if I'm talking to Canadians, is if we stop importing knives, because if we cut in our imports of knives by even half. That means those few of us guys who still do import knives, twice as many of our knives are gonna get taken away. So yeah, I'm asking you to be altruistic and share the risk. Keep buying knives, share the risk, uh, so that all of us will still get the benefit of getting lower cost knives than we could otherwise get.
So some of your knives are going to get stopped. Yes. Uh, I order probably two, three knives a week from outside of Canada. And so far this year, two knives have been stopped. That's not bad. In 2017, it was two knives total. In 2016, it was 14, 15, 14, something like that, knives that got taken. So right now I'm on par for another 2016 year. And that's okay because it still works out to be a whole lot cheaper to buy knives from GearBest than it does to buy knives from Canadian vendors. I almost forgot about this last box. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what this is. And now you will too. This is the product that I'm going to be using for my cut tests. I've got three boxes of this. This is commercial scotch Bright. I will have to come up with exactly the size that I'm going to use for my cut tests. In my trials where I decided to use this product, I was using an inch wide. So here we go. This stuff I think is a little bit more robust. I think it's a little bit thicker. I think it's a little bit stronger. So I'm probably going to start with uh, three quarters of an inch instead of an inch wide and cut strips this way. And then we'll see how many cuts I can get through it uh, before a knife gets so dull that it won't easily cut paper. And that's going to be what I'm using instead of rope the way Pete does over at uh, Cedric and Ada Outdoor and Gears channel. And uh, this is something I'll be able to do uh, probably about half as many cuts as he does with his sizal rope to get to the same result. And that'll save my arthritis in my hands and my wrists a little bit of wear and tear. And it's something that I'll be able to do consistently. And my main goal is a little bit different than his. Um, his is to see what different steels can do. My main goal is going to be so that uh, Chinese brands and other brands that a lot of people don't trust, I will test them against other knives to see if they are worthy of our trust. So for instance, um, this knife is S35VN steel. Well, I've got some knives from other brands, Western brands that have S35VN steel. And so I'll be able to trial this against the other S35VN steel. And if it behaves very much the same, then I'll be able to say this is very likely S35VN steel, just like they say it is. I can't say for sure because I'm not a metallurgist. I would, I'm not doing metallurgical tests. That's the only way you can be 100% certain. But from the tests that I'm going to be doing, you know, I think we can be redneck certain. You know, as certain as a redneck can be, uh, because, you know, doing redneck science, doing thorough tests, getting consistent results, and then using that information to uh, come up with a conclusion. So there we go. I just about forgot about that scotch break, and uh, now let's get back to what I was talking about before. So there you go. That's enough of my rambling. I'm not too many more videos, uh, at least until third Friday, until Friday, because I'm going to be working on getting that meeting, uh, everything ready for that meeting with my uh, member of parliament. Write to your member of parliament if you're in Canada. Get your spouse, your significant other to write to the member of parliament. Get any family members that are over 18 to write to your member of parliament. Please don't just email. Write a physical letter. One letter is worth a hundred emails because they know that emails are the lazy man's way, lazy person's way to get communications out. Anybody can do email real quick, but it takes time and it takes intention to write a letter. So please write a letter. To your MP. I'll have links below for how to get to your MP. It's free. No stamp is used if you write to your Member of Parliament via the House of Commons. It'll get to them and uh, they have to read their letters. At least somebody in their office does. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, and wait till you see the reviews of these cool little knives. Well, this one's bigger. Till next time, remember, always cut towards your chum and not your thumb.